is the big idea with Blue Smart? If you had to define Blue Smart in one line, yeah. So, so we are building an energy infrastructure and mobility company, intertwined, connected. Look, it's imminent that in the future, all cars will become EVs. The biggest challenge will be the charging infra challenge and that nobody's talking about. So are you focused on the charging infra or running a fleet of electric cars? Both. Would you want to share uh, what is the incentive structure here? You can earn more like um, monthly up to thousand. You can earn. In just four years of operation, Blue Smart has built one of Asia's largest EV ride hailing fleets. That's an impressive feat if you ask me. When Anmol, Punish and Tusar, the co-founders of Blue Smart, went ahead with the idea of pitching their company to investors, they received a very skeptical response from most people. And almost everyone questioned if Ola Uber turned their fleet into electric, then Blue Smart would be finished. Well, it was a fair question to ask. In fact, Ola did try operating an all-electric fleet in Nagpur back in 2017 and spent more than 50 crores only to wind it down later. When Blue Smart started in 2019, it was estimated that Ola and Uber already had market shares of 45% and 35% respectively. This might make you wonder why BlueSmart would enter a sector with an almost decade-long duopoly. Well, the answer lies in understanding the ideal customer persona for BlueSmart. You see, BlueSmart's target audience is actually much smaller than Ola's and Uber's. They want to cater to an audience who are ready to pay a premium for better services and sustainable transportation. The major USP for BlueSmart is better customer experience than Ola and Uber. As Ola and Uber scaled their operations in India over the last decade, their customer experience and service quality also dropped. I am sure you might have encountered drivers cancelling on you, dirty cabs, rude drivers asking for extra money or asking you to cancel and pay directly. All these things are unnecessary hassles that customers do not want to go through. The second factor working in their favour is the fact Indians are becoming more climate conscious and are moving towards sustainability. The product set they purchase reflect this shift. For example, the sustainable clothing market in India is expected to grow at a rate of 10% compounded annual growth rate. If you want to know how BlueSmart is tackling it, BlueSmart app actually appreciates you if you take a ride through it and they show you how much CO2 you saved by opting for an EV ride. Now let's take a closer look at their journey and some of the interesting strategies that they have adopted. Number 1. Starting as a vendor on Uber. It's often said that as a founder, you need to build your MVP to validate your hypothesis. That's exactly what BlueSmart did. They piloted their idea by becoming a vendor on Uber, using a fleet of 70 electric cabs that they registered to gather initial feedback and spread awareness. They did this for a year in Delhi, quickly realizing issues that caused dissatisfaction among users, such as delays in pickup, unexpected cancellations and surge pricing. Number 2. Unique positioning of their products Blue Smart is a premium offering targeted towards people who don't wish to face the hassles that have been somewhat normalized on other platforms. Additionally, there is a growing percentage of people who are becoming more climate and sustainability conscious. And this reflects in the choices of products that they use. Why do you drive Blue Smart? Uh, the vehicle is so neat. When we get the vehicle, it will be full hygienic and full and full neat. Why is it uh, very important to you? So very important is like uh, we can earn more like um, monthly up to thirty five thousand we can earn. Uh, for a consumer, why do you think they should go with uh, blue, they should choose Blue Smart over uh, you know Ola Uber kind of services? Uh, the Ola Uber person will uh, like uh, they will do like uh, rash driving in traffic. They can go however they need. But uh, we we have in uh, inside the traffic all city inside will be like a uh, 40 km speed. Most probably like a uh, Uber Ola, there will be no neatness. Some of the I didn't mention every drivers. Some of the drivers will be like uh, they will use uh, tobacco inside mm -hmm. the vehicle. The smell will be like awkward. The target persona of Blue Smart is affluent Indians. Hence, they initially focused solely on airport pickups and drops in metro cities like Delhi and Bangalore. By the way, I also recently read that the global airport pickup and drop market itself is estimated to be a whopping $10 billion. Number 3. Partnership Strategy Blue Smart has strategically partnered with leading automotive companies to enhance its electric vehicle fleet. This includes securing 3,500 EVs from Tata Motors and a contract with MG Motors for 500 vehicles. In 2023, Tata Motors further supported Blue Smart's growth 
by extending an umbrella credit of 25 crores for additional car acquisitions. In March 2024, BlueSmart continued its expansion by finalizing a deal for 4,000 vehicles with Citroen. To support this growing fleet, BlueSmart has also partnered with GeoBP to expand its charging infrastructure network. Number 4. Playing to their advantage Unlike other cab aggregators, BlueSmart leases their cars, thereby maintaining complete ownership of their fleet. Well, this unique business advantage helps them optimize the driver-to-car ratio. Using data analytics, BlueSmart figured that there is low driver availability during the high earnings per hour slot of 5 pm to 1 am. To capture the demand, BlueSmart introduced double driver shifts for a certain number of cabs, which resulted in 20% increase in revenue per vehicle and also addressed the concern of driver fatigue. Now, let's dive into the details of their business model. Their revenue equation is straightforward. It depends on the number of vehicles that they operate. Currently, BlueSmart earns about 3000 per cap per day compared to around Rs 500 when they started. Their current fleet size stands at about 7000 vehicles. Revenue per vehicle further depends on two primary factors, the number of trips per vehicle and the revenue per trip. The number of trips per vehicle is further influenced by three additional factors, number of drivers per vehicle, number of trips per driver, and number of revenue kilometers versus non-revenue kilometers. In terms of costs, we can categorize them into fixed and variable costs. Fixed costs would account for the car lease and expenditure on charging. Variable costs primarily include the salary and incentives for drivers, electricity and the maintenance of the vehicles. In a recent podcast, Puneet, one of the co-founders of BlueSmart revealed that they are currently at 450 crores annual recurring revenue for their ride-sharing business and they are also generating 100 crores revenue from their charging infrastructure business which is profitable as an individual unit. Here is a rough breakdown of BlueSmart's expenses per car per day. Vehicle lease 750 rupees, driver cost 750 rupees, fuel cost estimated at 300 for 200 kilometers, maintenance and insurance 600 rupees, tech and administrative cost 700 rupees. This totals 3,100 per day to operate a car. On average, BlueSmart earns 2,840 per car, resulting in a loss of 260 rupees per car per day. To break even, BlueSmart needs to increase the average trip size to 400 kilometers and make the average number of trips per day 8, as opposed to the current which is 7. I feel this is a problem that they will be able to resolve over time as their network further builds. But until then, they also need to sustain the burn. All that is good, but you must be wondering, what is their market share in India? By the way, did you know that Delhi and Bangalore together account for roughly 40-45% to of the Indian ride-hailing market, with Delhi alone accounting for 25%. This explains why BlueSmart is currently operating in just Delhi and Bangalore. At the moment, BlueSmart holds a 10% market share in Delhi, which is quite impressive for a 4-year-old new entrant in the ride-hailing business. They are also gradually expanding their B2B partnerships and currently have tie-ups with about 400 corporates. But it's not all roses and sunshine for BlueSmart. In fact, they have their own fair set of challenges. At the moment, the major challenge that BlueSmart is facing is scaling their fleet size. Recently, Uber also entered the EV ride-hailing business with the launch of Uber Green, which is currently available only in select cities like Mumbai, Bangalore and Delhi. Both Uber and BlueSmart are currently figuring out ways to expand their fleets. Prabhjit Singh, President of Uber India, believes that scaling an EV fleet is both a demand and a supply issue. On the demand side, one needs to identify locations with good enough demand to deploy more caps effectively. On the EV cap supply side, there is a bottleneck in production. Tata Motors, one of the largest EV makers in India, had a maximum capacity of only 50,000 vehicles per year as of last year. Personally, I use BlueSmart not just because it is a better customer experience overall, but also because it is good for the environment. BlueSmart currently claims that their EV fleet has saved 29,500 tons of CO2. The government is also advocating for electric fleets. Last year, Delhi's transport minister shared his vision for an EV-only fleet for all cab aggregators and e-commerce delivery players by 2030. Similarly, Uber also has set an ambitious goal to become an EV-only mobility platform by 2040. At AirTribe, we love talking about good products and what makes them so successful. If you are in Delhi or Bangalore, 
I would urge you guys to go ahead and try Blue Smart and see how it compares to Uber or Ola and share your thoughts in the comments below. With that, we come to the end of this episode of Scale by Airtrade. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and click the bell icon to stay tuned. This is Namneet signing off.